Welcome to the Special Olympics Coaches Training Video. This film was designed to provide coaches with innovative training tips for athletes from all sports. We've provided four segments including dynamic warm-up, core strength, strength training, and flexibility. This video was created by University of Wisconsin Physical Therapy students in conjunction with Special Olympics of Wisconsin. Please monitor your athletes for proper form during these exercises and stop the exercise if your athlete experiences any pain during the movement. Incorporating a dynamic warm-up into your practice or competition will not only properly energize the muscles or improve performance, but also prevent injuries to your athletes. Traditional static stretches actually relax muscles instead of preparing them for activity. The dynamic warm-up helps to prepare the body for the demands of the sport or workout by increasing blood flow, heart rate, and respiratory rate, elevating core body temperature, and increasing the flexibility of the muscles. The dynamic warm-up should take approximately 10 to 20 minutes. Exercises should include both the upper and lower extremities and incorporate all planes of movement. Your athletes should feel warmed up and have broken a sweat at the end of the warm-up. The following are some examples of exercises you can do with your athletes. Perform these exercises in an open space, allowing yourself plenty of room to move. Beginning with a simple light jog is a great way to start warming up the muscles for activity. For this exercise, the knees are brought up to the chest quickly. However, it is important to emphasize quality over quantity to the athletes. The feet are kicked back towards the buttocks quickly. Again, it is important for the athletes to have good technique over speed. This exercise is similar to a sideways shuffle but in a forward direction. Have the athletes lead with one foot on the way down and switch to the other foot on the way back. For athletes that find the traditional skip easy, you can incorporate the use of arm circles into the exercise to make it more challenging. You can also have them skip higher, often called a power skip, due to the increased push-off. This is the standard sideways shuffle. Make sure the athletes don't cross their feet and that they switch directions on the way down and back. Also, you can add in an arm cross or swing for more of a challenge. This may be a challenging exercise for some athletes. Encourage them to go at their own pace and watch out for other people. This is the same stretch as that which is done in a static position. Have the athletes grab above their ankle and pull their heel to their buttocks. Be sure that they do not pull their leg out to the side. Also, have them alternate their legs throughout the exercise. This is a good stretch for the hamstrings. The athletes hold their arms straight out in front of them. While keeping their back straight, they alternate kicking each leg up toward the hand on that side. It is alright if the athletes don't have the flexibility to reach their hands with their feet as they should have good technique over height. Have the athletes walk on their toes with their heels raised off the floor. This is a good stretch for the front of the shin. Then have the athletes walk back on their heels with their toes raised off the floor. This is a good stretch for the calf muscles. The forward lunge is a great stretch for the hip flexors. 
It is important that you emphasize good technique with the athletes, including keeping the knees from going over the toes and keeping a straight back. For athletes with decreased balance, you can limit the depth of the lunge to make it easier for them. For athletes that have good balance, you can incorporate in a trunk twist while in the lunge position. This is a good stretch for the low back. This is the same exercise shown in a frontal view. This is a good stretch for the inner thighs. Have the athletes lunge to one side while keeping their toes pointed forward and their knees from going over the toes. A wider step will increase the stretch. Lunges can be done down in one direction and back the other. This stretch is good for the buttocks and also improves balance. Have the athlete alternate bringing a knee to their chest with their hip turned out and their knee and foot turned in. More of a stretch is felt if the knee is hugged in towards the chest and the leg is pulled inward just above the ankle. For athletes with decreased balance, it may be helpful to have them do this stretch close to a wall for support. This is the same exercise shown in a frontal view. This is a nice stretch for the hamstrings and also is good for balance. The athlete raises one leg behind them while bending at the hips and reaching with both hands toward the floor. It is important to keep from turning the hips out while maintaining a flat back. This is a more challenging exercise that might not be appropriate for athletes with decreased balance. Increasing the strength in your athlete's core will help increase their balance, stability, and power. Exercises like the sit-up or the squeeze can be performed for a number of repetitions ranging from 10 to 30 reps in one set. The higher the reps the athlete does, the lower number of sets they should do. Whereas exercises like the plank or the superman can be held for an allotted amount of time. Remember to provide at least 15 seconds of rest between sets and progress exercises according to the individual. Emily is performing a sit-up by flexing her neck first and then lifting her shoulder blades up off the ground. This exercise can also be done with the arms crossed over the chest as Pat is demonstrating here. To increase the difficulty of this exercise, the arms can be put behind the head as well and the legs can be lifted off the floor in a 90 degree angle. Be sure that the athlete is not pulling on their neck to lift their head. Mike is demonstrating the bicycle by keeping his back flat on the floor and pedaling in the air. You can pedal both forward and backwards. 
Kyle is performing a vertical flutter kick by keeping his back flat on the floor and fluttering his legs reciprocally. This same exercise can be done by crossing one leg over top of the other reciprocally. The squeeze is an exercise that takes a lot of balance but is great for both upper and lower abdominals. This exercise can be made more difficult by crossing the arms over the chest or by placing the hands behind the head. Jill is performing the easiest form of a plank. Planks work your entire core, which includes your back. You can increase the difficulty of a plank by bringing your knees off of the floor or by straightening your arms. It is important that you keep a straight line through the body while performing a plank. The heel touch is performed by flexing the neck and then side bending the trunk to touch the heel. Here is another view of the same exercise. Kyle is performing a sit up with a twist by bringing his elbow to his opposite knee. Again, be aware that the athlete does not pull on their neck with their hands. This exercise can be made harder by raising the opposite knee up off the ground towards the elbow as well. The most difficult form of this exercise is by bringing both feet off the ground and alternating opposite arm and elbow while in the air. Jill is demonstrating a side plank. Again, you can make the plank more difficult by bringing the knees off of the floor or by extending the elbow. Keep in mind that you want to keep the arm directly below the shoulder and maintain a straight line through the entire body. Kyle is performing a basic part of the Superman by holding his arms off the floor. You can increase the difficulty by raising one arm and the opposite leg off the floor simultaneously. The entire Superman is being demonstrated here by raising all four extremities off the floor. The benefits of strength training include increasing strength and building lean muscle mass to accelerate metabolism. Strength training should be performed two to three times per week, with one rest day between each session. Three sets of 15 should be performed for all exercises, except where noted. Anne is performing a bicep curl using TheraBand. Elbows should be kept in at your sides while performing this exercise. This is a partner-assisted form of the previous exercise. Sarah is providing resistance at the forearm while still allowing Dean to move through a full range of motion. Either of the previous two exercises can be performed in standing or seated in a chair. Mike is performing a tricep dip on the floor, bending and straightening his elbows to raise his bottom off the floor. This is a more advanced version of the previous exercise. The legs are now straightened to increase the difficulty. Mike and Pat are performing wall push-ups to strengthen the anterior chest. Hands should be shoulder width apart with elbows bent to 90 degrees. This is a more advanced form of the previous exercise. The same exercise can be performed with the hands on the floor with knees bent. The elbows should again be bent to 90 degrees. 
Mike is now performing the most advanced form of the push-up, keeping the back as flat as possible. Jill is performing a bridge. Bridges are a great way to increase strength in the hamstrings and glutes. The easiest form of the bridge is performed with hands down at your sides. One foot at a time can be raised to increase the difficulty. David is increasing the difficulty of this exercise by crossing his arms over his chest. Again, one foot at a time can be raised to increase the difficulty even more. Ray is performing the most difficult form of the bridge with the arms raised straight overhead. In addition to increasing strength, bridges also work on balance and core strengthening. Each bridge should be held for at least 30 seconds. Ray is performing a forward lunge to increase the strength in the quads, hamstrings, and glutes. While performing this exercise, your knee should not go over your toe and your opposite knee should not hit the ground. The difficulty of this exercise can be modified by changing the depth of the lunge. Wall sits are another great way to strengthen the entire lower body. The difficulty of this exercise can also be modified by changing the depth of the squat or raising one leg. Dean is now performing a standing heel raise on two feet. Once this exercise can be performed 20 times without fatigue, the intensity can be increased. Anne is increasing the difficulty of this exercise by performing it on one foot. Both of these exercises require the athlete to stand up straight with good posture and raise as high up onto the balls of the feet as possible. The flexibility portion of this video is designed to provide your athletes with a sample stretching routine. The exercises provided include both standard stretches and yoga poses. If it is your goal to maintain the flexibility of your athletes, have them perform a group stretching routine three to five times per week at the end of their practice, holding each position for approximately 30 seconds. If it is your goal to improve the flexibility of a specific muscle group, have your athletes stretch that muscle group 5 to 10 times per day, again holding each stretch for 30 seconds. This will help keep the muscles stretched out all day long and promote long-term length gains in the muscle. For the sake of time, the athletes demonstrating these stretches will not be holding each stretch for the recommended time. If you would like to follow along, find a soft, non-slippery space and we will begin in standing. 